Hi, I'm Grant Gallagher, and this is my wife, Jane Gallagher. We're the owners of the Diamond Cross Ranch here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And we'd like to invite you to come and have a good time with us. Just a quick little demonstration here of freckles. I take the bridle off of him and just show you how this works. If a horse is tuned into you, he's really listening, he's comfortable with you, you know, the two of you really become one and it's really great because you have the power of a 1300 pound athlete and working with you and hopefully you're leading the game here. So if I just think about turning right, I get his mind to come to the right first. And uh, where the mind goes, the body goes. And so the mind comes left. Now horses are so sensitive that if a fly would land back here, he's gonna take his head and get it off. So really that's all that is. It's just a slight touch of my leg, just a pressure, you don't even see it. And then I can get him to move off and just walk on around like this. So it's, it's nice to have a horse that you're not having to pull anybody ride horses you know how what a, a battle that can be fighting the horse uh, so this is really subtle communication where the two of you become in harmony now let's see if he can just fall up off here and then when i just stop riding he stops and i'll back him up here keith's going to let this filly and she's a two-year-old filly that like I said, is unbroke, never had a saddle on. She's had a rope on her, but she's uh, pretty wild, as you can see. Do you see how claustrophobic she got, scared in that pen right there? So this whole idea is to allow the young horse the freedom to move around and uh, escape whenever it's afraid, you can see. Now Freckles, you watch his body language here, his ears are back, and this is how this all really started. Uh, the horse was just observed, when a young horse is introduced into the herd, the, all the other horses will drive the young horse away and really drive it out of their herd until that young horse submits. And the body language for submission is You'll see the ears moving, the eye blinking, uh, the horse will begin to lick and chew, but the biggest thing is it'll drop its head and neck, and I think she's about to here. See the licking and chewing there? That's the first time she started to move her lips. And what I'd like her to do is to drop her head and neck. You'll see if she'd, she's gonna do that. It's just a sign that if she doesn't, we'll just drive her around a little more. She's kind of curious up there. That's kind of what I was waiting for her to do. 
takes a while sometimes, but I, I thought she was ready. And my job as a horse trainer is to recognize what the horse is going to do before it does it. So I can honor the slightest try and the smallest change. I honor a try, a positive try. And this is how I start a lot of young horses. I'll get in here like this with a confident horse like him. And if I'm above her, then she learns that there's nothing really to be feared of me up here. Because when I'm on her back, that's like the mountain lion that could jump off a rock or out of a tree and, uh, you know, attack her. And that's what they think we are. Now you can see how just that little movement right there is pretty scary. Now there's, there's a really good sign of it right there. She dropped her head and neck. They pretend to be smelling, but they're really just responding to the older horse. They're really good right there. Submission. So as long as we have that going, the horse is a lot less dangerous. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let Freckles on out of here. I like him to honor a boundary. And it needs to be like not a fence, but just a boundary of pressure, what I call it. Everything you do with a horse is, is really about pressure and release. But the important thing is that you're consistent. And that's where a lot of people don't, uh, <clears throat> they miss it because they're not consistent enough. Very important to be consistent. Now, if I want her to come over here and stay on this side of the rope, what I would, could do is I could, you know, catch her and force her to come here against her will, and that would be the old way, maybe tie her to the fence or something and restrain her. But to get her to come here on her own free will would be just a different way of doing it. So noise is a pressure to a horse. And if we put some noise out there and quiet here, we can get her to come across that rope. Now, I'd like you guys to help me out by making a little noise when she's on that side of the rope and when she's on all four feet, all four feet on this side of the rope will be quiet. So we'll take the pressure off. And at the same time, we'll desensitize her to noise. So we're killing two birds with one stone, okay? You guys ready to make some noise? Remember, Quiet on this side of the rope, noise over there. All right, ready? Okay, let's make some noise. Clap, hoop, holler. Oh, you guys are good. They're dropping her head. We'll see where she goes here. Smells the rope. Uh oh. Okay, you're a little slow there. When it comes to boundaries, we got to be really clear. We got to get the horse desensitized to the noise and and clapping of people and that would be a good thing every time the horse makes a positive change i like to try to uh, give it a little time to just stop and think so it sinks in now if i approach this horse my body language is going to be soft she's already submitted so i don't have to be the one in charge really to show her i don't have to be showing her any authority she's already said you got it and of course the the hands these are these are like claws and the, the hand is down my body is soft my shoulders are sideways but see she still doesn't want anything to do with me so when she leaves i'm just going to follow her like that if she leaves, I'm going to follow her. If she'll stop and look at me. Just a little pressure here. There, there's a release. I'm just going to step away like that. See, she, she made the right choice. There's another right choice. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the right choice. 
but it is a sign she's relaxing. <laughs> Can you help me with that? <laughs> you catch. <laughs> but I'd like to see if I can just get her to let me into her life here. Just to smell, just to try, if you'll just try. I must not smell real good here. Got the, don't have the horse cologne on. Sometimes if you, uh oh. If you uh, get yourself smelling like a horse, this is a little easier. This is kind of like shaking hands with a stranger. And you can offer your hand, but they don't necessarily are going to, sh yeah, she's playing hard to get, that's right. I'm the one that's been throwing hay to you the last two weeks, so you ought to appreciate me, but there. There's a try, did you see that? This is acknowledgement. Now there's a nice little try right there, wasn't it? A lot of times, you know, when you're reaching, of course, you know, we have claws, so we're reaching to a horse with these. They think, you know, instinctively, t flesh is gonna get torn. So when they find out that nothing happens that's bad, it makes them feel pretty good. I might just get down like this, too. Uh, sometimes I like to get down low like this and uh, meaning I'm not a threat to her. You know animals in the animal kingdom uh, when they want to be tough they get all puffy. Their hair stands up and they get their heads up in the air. Well this tells her that I'm not afraid of her and I'm not a threat to her. I'm actually pretty vulnerable here but I'd like to see if she'll just smell me like that. And you know, the first time that a horse, you ever touch a horse, uh, it's really a violation to them when we touch them. They want to come to us and smell and then make the first contact. So that's, that's a nice try right there. I might just see if I can. I'd like to breathe in her nostrils. What does that do? Breathing in the nostrils? Uh, that's, how they, that's how they communicate when they smell one another. Also, everything is related to smell. There, she licked her lips for the first time, see, since I got down here. And. Uh, so she's feeling better about the situation, what that licking lips is. You know, when they're stressed, their lips are tight. And uh, when they learn something, they'll loosen those lips up and start to relax. That's, that's way better, way better. Yeah, I, I'll just see if she'll smell that and I'll take that away. You know, they're really looking for a friend. They're a social animal and if they can't have another horse, they'll, you know, they'll take us if necessary, you know, if we, uh, if they think that they'll be all right with us. It's better than being alone. Eventually they find out we're okay. And I might just back up into her here. There, she kind of touched me a little bit. That's, that's nice. That's a, that's a big change right there, isn't it? Good. Now her escape route is right out there, so I want to make sure she has an escape route. And I'm going to reach up here to see if she'll let me touch her. There, that's good. And I'll start petting her here. I'll try to pet her like her mother licked, him, licked her. 
And I'd been training horses a, a lot of years and the old guy that was uh, helping me said I didn't even know how to pet my horse. That was pretty hard on my ego and I thought I, I knew everything about training horses. And the truth was I really didn't pet them. But uh, they, they really, really appreciate this. And like I said, they don't like to be patted. That's scary. But this is uh, pretty natural to them. Another thing, I'll just kind of work, kind of begin to rubber in here, scratch her on the mane. That's what they do to each other. They'll groom one another. A lot of people ask me, do you use food? I don't like to use food. Horses uh, don't bring food to their young. Uh, wolves and predators do, cats. But horses lead their young to food and water. And uh, that's what we try to do rather than use food. It's not a good relationship with a horse to be feeding them all the time, especially out of your hand. They expect it. And when you don't have it, they get angry and they can be pretty obnoxious. Now she's letting me back here, I like this. And really, this is a lot of this is just about gentling the horse and helping the horse get rid of its fear. Once you get your hands on them and start this, they, they start to get more confident. And I'll try to come down in here. This is a spot where they can't really reach. And uh, it's one of their favorite places. Now I'm gonna try this hand. There you go. Try this side. Let's see if she'll let me in here. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other. That's she's being a little more protective on that side. I'd like to get a saddle on her tonight. Not sure that'll happen. You can only go as fast as the horse allows. But the really neat thing about this philosophy of training is the horse retains what they learn because you're really getting through to their mind and not just forcing the body to comply. Might get behind her here, see what she does. Now I'm going to introduce the rope to her here and see how she handles this. I'll let her smell that. There she's starting to <laughs> kind of got with me for a couple steps here. I'm going to take a little sand and I'm going to toss it at their hip. See how sensitive she is to that? just a grain of sand, and as it hit her hip, I clucked. So she's gonna connect that noise to that grain of sand, and pretty soon I'll be able to just see that when I can move that hip over with just a, just a motion like that, and then that way. I like to be able to control that hind end. If you can get that, can, hind end to move away from you, you can control the front end. And that's the dangerous end, by the way. When that end moves toward you, you better be getting out of the way. Now backing up becomes an escape, which is good. She can back up all she needs to. Jane, would you pull that rope out? I might need a little more room here. I like her, she's licking her lips here. There goes your boundaries. Not quite gonna let me in there. I'm gonna try something a little different here. I'm gonna take the end of this rope. Let's see if I can just pet her with it here.
Good. She's remembered that little lesson. Like I, I said, the old days, you know, we had to restrain the horse somehow. <clears throat> I'll use my flag here. This is pretty scary, as you can see. And uh, I'll just use it to direct her. As long as she's afraid of it, I'll use it to move her. I want to be able to control her body anyway. So I'm going to have it... Just use it to move her around a little bit here. She's gonna to wanna to get away from it. So her escape route is off to her left. Do a little side pass here. If I do too much, she's gone too quick. If I don't do enough, then I don't get anywhere. So the idea here is to, to work smart. Go as fast as you can, but not too fast. There, that's, those are better steps now. She's starting to loosen up in her feet. Feet are getting more fluid. And this is her weak side. If you remember, this is the side she didn't want me in on as much, so I'm gonna work on it a little. Get a little side pass going here. There, she stopped. Even though she was afraid of it, she stopped her feet and really tried hard. So instead of touching her with it, I just withdrew and took it away. I'll let her kind of smell that like that. That's a little spot right there when I, you know, want to get ready to ride her. That's really going to show up in a bad way, so I want her to learn she can survive that. She gets her feet stuck and then she kind of bolts forward. So just by allowing her to move her feet and get away from that, that's what helps her overcome that fear. Just let her know that doesn't hurt. There, there's a big change right there. Everybody see that? Started to relax, wanted to smell it. And she's licking her lips. It's a lot of work being afraid. It's an old irrigation tarp to see if She'll just let me put that up on her. You can see how tight she gets. I'd like her to see that tightness kind of leave. There you go. Good. Get her used to carrying something. This would be a little bit like my legs. So that's a little preparation for having your legs around her. There, she's licking her lips. It's also a lot like having a slicker. How many of you know you don't wait till you're on the side of a mountain with a cliff below you to put your slicker on a young, young horse when you haven't really practiced that. So it's a good way to get her ready for that in a safe environment here. Yeah, there you go. I like this poem. It goes like this. When you're busting out a bronco, you better get him slicker broke or you'll have to do it sometime and it won't be any joke. When the wind begins to howl and it whips his mane and tail, 
and a black dark cloud rolls in full of lightning, rain, and hail. Well, you know if you step off him, he'll surely jerk away. So you try it in the saddle, hoping you can stay. But that horse, he goes to bucking while your slicker's halfway on. And your arms and sleeves get tangled and he throws you and you're gone. Well, your slicker's torn and tattered and the wind has got your hat. You see your horse and saddle come flying across the flat. About that time you realize you just learned a lesson and you won't forget it, pal. Better slicker break your bronco in a mighty good corral. Let her smell that. Good. Good girl. You have the other halter, long rope there. You do everything you can to get them ready. She's so sensitive, this filly, that I'm going to keep a halter on her. So if she does get to bucking, I can try to direct her a little bit and keep her off of the fence. And she might just be fine, who knows. I've never been able to figure out exactly which ones are going to buck and which aren't. You going to be all right with that? You'll get through this, I promise you. Just let her feel that little bit. There's a few steps. Good. Good. Where's my flag? I had, a, I had a feeling, hey. Save your life. Uh, she's all right now. <laughs> you gonna be all right? Couple of steps. There's some steps right there. She made it. Good. I'll let her think about that for a second. She's gonna lick her lips. See, she. She managed to get a couple steps there without bucking. We'll see if we can get them that way. Oop. Good girl. Everybody say good girl. Getting warm. All right, I like to put this little stool here 
Let's see if I can drive her between the stool and the fence. Get that forward motion going. Good, just like she was gonna go get in a horse trailer. Now back this way. See how close I can get her to this stool. I'll just pet her over the rear like that. I don't want her afraid of this flag. I just want her to respect it. And this is gonna help her get used to that flag. Good, these are good steps. Direct her through here. And I like to just get up on it like this and keep that motion going. By nature, horses are afraid of a mountain lion jumping off of a rock, out of a tree, under their back. So when we get up above them, they're a lot more bothered than when we're on the ground. We're not so much of a threat when we're on the ground, although we are a threat to them, they think. But once we're up here, we're that mountain lion that's got a hold of them. And uh, so it's good to get up above them. I'd like to see if I can get her to walk around my leg here. Come on. Another girl. Yeah, get up next to me here like this. This way she's used to my body up above her and next to her where it's gonna be when I'm riding her. My leg's gonna touch her here. Good. Bring her back through here. See if I can come around this way that same motion. What you do on one side, you have to do on the other. Balance things out. They may accept you on one side, but they may not accept the other side so well. A lot of times when, what scares a horse is when you're on their back and you reach out here to direct them at, I see your hand, that scares them. So I do a lot of this petting. Yeah, that's good, girl. All right, Jane, if you'd bring him in, I'm gonna work her just a little bit off of him and then I think she's ready to ride. Freckles is such a good, good helper. He brings a lot of confidence to the young horse, but. This doesn't hurt to do a little of this. Like see her come back through this hole right here. Back up a little bit. Keep those feet moving. There you go. Very good. Now this side. She can feel my leg there. Tip her back. 
back through here. There, good. Yep. So me being up here is not that different than where I'm at right now. Okay, Jane, if you want to come over, you could hop right on. Good lady, what a good lady, what a good lady. I'm gonna take my spurs off. I don't wanna accidentally poke her. I want her to get used to my leg. I leave the spurs off first couple of rides, first several rides really. We'll just practice getting on this side once here. What a good girl. Yeah. What a good girl. I'm going to throw that rope over her head so I'll get her used to that. I'm up here. I'm gonna push her off her feet. And wall her that saddle around a little bit until she braces here. She brace. There, she got real solid between the front legs. When I push, she leans against. When I pull, she leans against. And this is one place where you want the horse to resist you. So it'll stand still to get on when you step in that stirrup. So it's kind of her cue to get solid and stand still. That's a good girl. She moves around. I just direct them here like this. If she needs to get troubled, I'd step down. And I just go ahead and get on. Try to stay on. Lots of petting here. Good girl. See, that's that rock, and you can see how solid she is in her front legs. And I bend, I lean over like this. She's gotten real solid. So that's her cue to stand still, just like if you want a glass for elk or eat your sandwich or whatever, stop during your raining pattern. This just means stop and stand still. Standing still is a good thing. But eventually you gotta go. They don't know how to go. So I need to get her to go. I start getting a little busy in my body here and direct her and then just pet her. She'll make a few steps like that. These are good steps. Yeah, took a look at me there. Good steps. Now we'll follow Freckles. She can stand still with me on. Now she's found she can walk and not have to fall apart. That's good. See if I can direct her over here with just fingertips. Now 
Yeah, we'll go the other way. Big sigh there, I like that big sigh. We'll direct her off here. You're all right. If she's to jump and run off, I just try to stay on her here and just pet her. So that's good. I like that and I'd settle for that for a ride. She's been through quite a bit. See if I can bend her around here like this. So far, everything's good. I always say when you can, quit on a good note. As we're just building a foundation of trust, we don't have to do a lot of run around galloping, just a few of these nice, easy, soft rides, and, and then we'll move into a trot and a canter. You know, if she's to get bothered and have to run around, I'd let her and just be a passenger. But right now, this is great. It's a good place to quit her. She'll remember this, and hopefully she'll start the same way. And just in conclusion, I'd like to do this poem. I like it because I'm a visual learner. And uh, I didn't do that well in school. I didn't read too good. And I sure couldn't listen to lectures very well. The focus wasn't good. I think it's called ADD. We didn't know what it was in those days. But uh, I hope you saw something tonight that really meant something to your own life, touched your own life. Maybe it's some child you remembered or thought about maybe it's your own or your own life could be employee employer relations but uh, I hope you saw something here you know we had the acronym on trust T-R-U-S-T -T. first T was terrified she was because of that she was our resistant she gained understanding that I'm a good leader I'm not going to hurt her but I am going to uh, make sure she moves her feet and does what I ask her to do and has respect and uh, the S is for submission. She submitted to me by dropping her head. She's not uh, fighting me or has an attitude. She has a good attitude. And uh, finally, the last T is trust. And that's a relationship that will last forever. It's what you get down the road like freckles here. And this is the beginning. And for just starting out, I'm pretty happy with her. So I'd like to conclude with this poem. It's called See a Sermon. I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one should walk with me than merely tell the way. For the eye is a better pupil, more willing than the ear. Find counsels confusing, but examples always clear. And the best of all the preachers are the men who live their creeds. For to see words put into practice, that's what everybody needs. I soon can learn to do it if you let me see it done. Can watch your hands in action but your tongue too fast may run. And the lecture you deliver may be very wise and true, but I'd rather get my lessons by observing what you do, for I might misunderstand you and the high advice you give, but there's no misunderstanding how you act and how you live. Thank you, and thank you for coming to the Diamond Cross Ranch. Hope to see you again.